My name is Francis Chanfroca with Bayshore Networks Incorporated, and we're going to show you today a demonstration of cybersecurity for an industrial internet application. What I have here is, a, is two sets of industrial equipment, factory A and factory B, and these are just PLCs, standard PLCs with terminal I.O., connected to a thermocouple, which is a temperature sensor, and that's on factory A. Factory B, which is on the other end of a network connection, we have this light bar, which is taking the place of an actuator or an application or anything that reads sensor data, which we are feeding through the network. Okay, let me show you how the, how the, how the data works. If I change the temperature of the thermocouple, which could be plugged into a pressure vessel or a furnace or any kind of industrial equipment, you can see that the temperature reading changes on our computer application, but it also changes the lights. So the lights are linearly reflecting the temperature, but these are sensor readings being passed through the network that are being interpreted by another set of industrial equipment. I want to show you how a typical hacker may attack this application. We built a script which actually can attack this kind of application, and I'm going to run it on this small PC, a little, little PC such as a hacker might be using. And now we're running a script, and as you can see, the behavior of the light bar is now chaotic. If you're actually running a process or making decisions based on the sensors, sensor data you're getting here, you'll make bad decisions and the, the attacker has succeeded. Well, you might think that that's a firewall problem. It actually is much more complicated than that. The network traffic is completely normal. It's completely on the right ports. It's coming from the right IP addresses, but the content of the network traffic, of the sensor data is inappropriate, is wrong, and it produces bad results. So that's what we want to be able to filter out. What you need to do is to recognize patterns in the data itself, in the actual content, and based on an awareness of the protocol, so the protocol and the transactions. This particular protocol we're using in this application is called Modbus TCP, a very standard one. Right here, we have a Bayshore appliance, which is deployed in the network between site A and site B, all right? And it's inspecting the Modbus traffic and looking at the data going through, and it can tell when data is inappropriate or probably part of an attack. So let me show you how we, we apply a policy in the Bayshore device that protects this protocol and recognizes this kind of attack. And let me just switch it on. Now, I've switched on the policy in the Bayshore device, and as you can see, the actuator changes its behavior. It's now back to normal, all right? It's not showing the chaotic behavior we saw a moment ago. At the same time, however, the real application, the real sensor data from the actual industrial process is still working just fine, you see? So the Bayshore policy recognizes the inappropriate or incorrect or uh, attack mode behavior and filters it out, but continues to, to allow the, the, uh, the correct behavior. So now I'm going to disconnect the hardware Bayshore device so that we can show you the same demo running in the cloud. And now factory A and factory B are talking to each other through a cloud provider. So this is all happening virtually in the internet. With the attack script now, it's actually running through Tor exits. That's a pretty classic thing to do for hackers who want to hide their tracks. And so one of the things that the Bayshore policy engine in the cloud is capable of doing is recognizing when traffic is coming through a Tor exit. So that's another signifier that we're looking at bad traffic that should be blocked. So as you can see from our actuator light bar here, we're seeing attack behavior, and that's coming from the attack script. So let me show you how easy it is now to service chain in a Bayshore policy. I'm going to use an ordinary tablet computer accessing a web-based interface that actually is running in the cloud, and I'm going to add a Bayshore policy. And the policy I invoke 
immediately changes the behavior of the light bar. The computer in the back is tailing the syslogging from the cloud-based policy engine. And if you look closely at that, you can see the traffic that we're blocking from the attack script. If I take the policy back off again, the attack immediately starts up. The reason why this is valuable is two things, capital cost avoidance and time to market. Rather than provisioning hardware Bayshore appliances and the expertise and the training it takes to deploy them on-prem, in the cloud, all you need to do is to service chain them and deploy with a very, very simple interface, and the time to market drops to the time it takes to push a button. Thank you for listening, and if you want to hear more, please contact us at Bayshore Networks and we'll be delighted to talk with you and, and answer all of your technical questions.